This video covers ANCOVA, or analysis of covariance, which is a method for testing basically whether regression lines differ significantly, either in slope or in intercept, between different categories, between different levels of a factor. For example, in this graph here, does the relationship between K2O and SiO2 differ between rocks from Archean cratons in blue or rocks from not Archean cratons in pink? So I'll point out, just as you may notice, that many of the regression assumptions are violated by this example shown here, um, but that's kind of not really pertinent right now. So we're not going to really get into the theory of ANCOVA. I'm just going to focus on a sort of general description of what it does and what it requires so that you know whether it's the sort of test you might need, and it may be worthwhile to, to read more about it if you're going to actually use this seriously. So first, let's take a step back and talk about something called general line linear models. You've actually learned about several of these, despite the fact that I haven't used this term before. So consider having a single continuous dependent variable. If the independent variables are also continuous, this is called linear regression from the previous video. So this equation is similar to what you've already seen, except here we have, you can have multiple independent variables, x1, x2, and so forth. But if the independent variables are instead categorical factors, we actually have ANOVA. So ANOVA is actually an example of a type of general linear model, and it's actually related to linear regression, except the factors, which I've given like x hat and x2 hat here, are treated as something called dummy variables, where they're just coded as 0 or 1 for the different levels of the factor, for the different categories that they belong to. So ANCOVA is a type of general linear, linear model when you have a mixture of continuous and categorical independent variables. So you can think of it as like an extension of ANOVA or an extension of linear regression, but in reality all three are just specific cases of the general linear model. So, so ANCOVA tests whether the linear model differs for different levels of a categorical factor. So is the relationship between continuous variable x1 and y different for different levels of the grouping factor x2. So we'll come back a little bit to general linear models later in the course when we discuss model comparison, but for now we'll just move on and talk about ANCOVA. So in the simplest case, where we have a single continuous independent variable on the x-axis here, and a single independent factor with two levels, the blue or the pink, um, this factor could affect the dependent variable, for example, in a simple additive way, like in the upper right. So basically, in the upper right, we have a one unit increase in the continuous independent variable causes a one unit increase in the dependent variable. That's true for both lines, but the, in one category, that line is just shifted one unit up. So the, that category has an additive effect, so basically it takes that relationship and just adds one and shifts it up. It's also possible, like in the bottom row, that the category factor could have some sort of non-additive effect, and this is called an interaction. So in this case, the slope differs, and that means that continuous independent variable can either have a stronger or a weaker effect on the dependent variable, depending on which category we're looking at. So in both cases, the blue category has a steeper slope, therefore the independent variable has a stronger effect on the dependent variable than it does in the other category. So ANCOVA, or analysis of covariance, requires one continuous dependent variable and at least one continuous independent variable, like in linear regression. But it also requires that the data is divided into categories with at least one categorical or factor variable. So its purpose is to test for a difference in the, regression, in the regression relationship, either in the slope or in the intercept, between these categories, between the levels of this factor variable. And the null hypothesis is that there's no effect, so that category membership doesn't matter what group the data belongs to, the regression slope and intercept is the same. So the first step in ANCOVA is to test a general linear model, a GLM we'll call it here, that includes an interaction term between the independent variable and the factor variable. So if that interaction is significant, that indicates that there's a non-additive effect, and that means that the strength of the relationship, or the slope of the line, differs depending on the factor level. 
So if you find a significant interaction that tells you that the slopes differ significantly, but actually it's as far as you can go with this, um, I'll talk about the next step, but it turns out that having an equal slope is an assumption for the next step. However, the slopes don't differ significantly. You can then test a second model to see how the dependent variable is affected by the category holding the independent variable constant, and how the dependent variable is affected by the continuous variable holding the category constant. So this is an example of something called multiple regression, where you basically look at how each independent variable affects the outcome, sort of well controlling for all the other changes in the other variables. So we don't have an interaction here, but so basically if the categorical term in the model is significant, that indicates that they have a significantly different intercept. I'll show an example of this when, we, when I show you how to do it in R at the end of the video. So ANCOVA has all the linear regression assumptions. The first four are the same assumptions that you would have seen in the linear regression video, um, but it also has a further requirement that the linear regression slopes have to be equal for all of the groups or all the levels in the factor. So that's if you want to do the whole thing. I mean, you can definitely test for significant differences in the slope as the first part, but you can only test for differences in intercept in the second part if the slopes don't differ significantly. So ANCOVA is sort of like an extended version of ANOVA. They're all types of general linear models. So you'll end up with an F statistic. And to sort of report your results, you should give, you would often want to give a scatter plot with the data, and it helps to have, say, color coded points or use different symbols for points, and then you can have different regression lines with different colors or symbols for the, for the groups to indicate how their slopes and intercepts may differ. You should also, of course, report the test name and the F statistic, the degrees of freedom, there are two of them for an F statistic, remember, and the p value. And so if you tested two models, one for slope, and then if that was okay, then you moved on to the intercept one, you will have an F statistic, degrees of freedom, and a p-value for each of those two models. You would want to talk about them one and then, then the other, or whichever one is sort of relevant to the question that you're asking. So because ANCOVA, ANOVA, and linear regression are all cases of the general linear model, you can actually perform ANCOVA either with the AOV, ANOVA function, or with the LM, linear regression function. So I'll illustrate the procedure here with the ANOVA function, AOV. I think it's just, it, it sort of requires one less step, and it's also similar to what you've already learned for, for ANOVA. So the first step is to test the model that includes this interaction term. And so in R, that's denoted with the multiplication symbol. So we have the dependent variable column, as a function of this tilde symbol that you've seen before for linear regression and for ANOVA. Then you have the independent variable column multiplied by the factor variable column, indicating that they all come from a particular data frame with, with whatever name that has. So the output will look just like the ANOVA output did, but with extra lines. So we first focus on the interaction term, which is the one containing the, the colons, so in this case delta CO3 colon species. In this example, the F statistic for the interaction is 5.009. There are two and 36 degrees of freedom, and the p-value is 0 0.012. We can ignore the other two lines for now, although they tell you how the continuous variable and the factor variable affect the uh, outcome, independent of each other and independent of the interaction. So in any case, the, the interaction indicates a significant difference in slope among the three types of categories of species here. So technically, we have to stop here. But I will, I'll, I'll proceed and demonstrate how to test for intercept, even though we haven't actually met those assumptions. So remember, the inter, if the interaction is not significant, which wasn't the case here, it was significant. But if it's not, you can then test whether the factor is significant. Where that would indicate a significant difference in the intercepts of the lines. So that's done by including both the continuous independent variable and the factor variable as additive terms in the function. So use the plus sign, not the multiplication sign like from the last slide. And so the output will look the same, just we won't have the interaction line here because we didn't test for it. And so in this case, we want to read the data from the line for the factor variable, which is species. And so the format for the F statistic and the degrees of freedom and the p-value are the same. And those three pieces of information are 
the three uh, the key things you should use when you're summarizing your results in writing.